Here to discuss the exciting mission is former NASA astronaut and senior advisor of space programs at the Intrepid Sea, Air and Space Museum, Mike Massimino. So Mike, how significant is it to get a spacecraft successfully into Jupiter's orbit? Uh, it's, it's, it's really significant for, uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, th this thing launched five years ago, the spaceship did. Uh, and in the first two years, uh, it, it stayed mainly in the inner solar system and swung back around toward Earth and used Earth as like a slingshot effect. Its gravity would attract it and then fling it out toward the outer solar system uh, to arrive three years later, now five years since it launched, um, in, in the orbit of, of Jupiter. And then it had to fire its rocket engine at the right time to slow down. It was going about 100, over 150,000 miles an hour, which is really fast. I can't comprehend that, that. that, that yeah. Orbiting, that would be orbiting the Earth in like nine minutes going that fast. It had to slow down a little bit, just enough to, uh, to be captured by Jupiter's orbit. And uh, now that all this amazing, amazing uh, engineering is completed, it's uh, time to see what kind of science uh, results we can get from the spaceship. So I guess the question a lot of people are asking, though, why Jupiter, you know, and why at this point are they deciding to do this? Well, um, at, you know, at this point, we were able to do it is one thing. For example, photovoltaic technology with solar arrays. This is the farthest from the sun that solar arrays have been used for power for the spaceship, for example. So, so technology allows us to do this. Um, and as far as why Jupiter, uh, Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system. Uh, most astronomers think that it was the first planet that was formed in our solar system. And so by studying its atmosphere the way that this spacecraft will uh, and, uh, and what it's made out of and under trying to understand its, its magnetic field, it gives off a lot of radiation. You can see the aurora and some of those pictures at the poles are just magnificent. But this is uh, things we want to understand, and the reason we want to is to answer some of the bigger questions, not just what Jupiter is made out of and what, what it's like, but also bigger questions like how was our solar system actually formed, how was Earth formed, where did we come from, why did life form here, those big questions that we still don't have answers to. We, uh, we hope that these smart scientists, um, you know, I'm not one of them, these really <laughs> smart scientists are going to use this information to figure all this out and tell us the answers. Uh, you're a former astronaut. That qualifies yeah. as pretty darn smart in my book. But let me ask you this. As extreme an environment as Jupiter is, what do you think the chances are that this spacecraft is actually going to be able to survive? I mean, the gravitational pull, the radiation, all of the stuff that makes it such an extreme environment. You bring up some excellent points because it is traveling really fast and it's by a really gigantic planet so that its orbit has to be just right so it doesn't get sucked in. Eventually, at the end of about 20 months, it will enter the atmosphere and burn up in Jupiter. But they figured out the orbit such that uh, the orbit is highly elliptical. It'll be going very fast, but it's highly elliptical, which means it's going to come close to Jupiter, Jupiter and swing out long away from it by a distance and it keep coming around. So it'll do this uh, over 30 times, uh, in about over 30 orbits over the next uh, 18 to, to 20 months. Um, the radiation is a big factor, so some of these instruments are going to die quickly uh, within just a couple orbits, depending on the sensitivity of them. And then the instruments are shielded from that radiation, but eventually the radiation, as you say, will, will be too much for them and will overtake them. So they're hoping to get about 18 to 20 months of science from this, and then everything will be dead and it'll, it'll enter the atmosphere and burn up. Well, it's fascinating to watch. Thank you so much, Mike Massimino. Appreciate your insight. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. <laughs>